by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakakwadash. In Hebrew, that would be the name of our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is a Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone for teaching us this truth. Honors to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. And also honors to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people that's returning back to Yahweh, <clears throat> by Hashem Yahweh Shai, during these final moments in America and throughout the world, so that he will have mercy on us in his time of judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. In this lesson here, we're going to discuss nutrient-dense foods versus processed foods and digestion and gut health. I'm going to try to keep it short, simple, straight to the point. But in this ministry, all us brothers got different talents, you know, that we can bring to the ministry to help out one another. And I have a lot of knowledge, you know, about the body going to Esau school. But, you know, I learned how to take that knowledge and make it my own, you know. But the first thing we want to discuss is what is a nutrient-dense food. So I got a simple Google definition. Food having a high vitamin and mineral content in relation to its weight. Nutrient-dense foods would be like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. So a high vitamin and mineral content in relation to its weight. So pretty much all natural foods per gram has more vitamins and minerals per gram. So this is what will make a food nutrient dense. While processed foods and your common foods here in America, not many nutrients. And that's why I got this picture here. You got a balance in the natural foods. It's heavier on this balance. Again, not because of weight, because it's nutrient dense. So in terms of nutrients, your healthy foods would be a lot more heavy on the nutrients. And the first one that we want to make Nutrient dense food digests slower. So nutrient dense food like apples, broccoli, salads, everything that's on this picture right here, it digests slowly. While other foods that's processed, chips, candy, pop, donuts, McDonald's burgers, Taco Bell, that stuff digests rapidly. That's why you can pig out at the Chinese buffet or on some Taco Bell and some McDonald's or your gas station food and snacks. You can pig out on that stuff and then an hour later, you hungry again. It's because that stuff is not nutrient dense. The purpose of your digestive system, your small and large intestine, your pancreas, your liver, your stomach is to break down the food to extract the nutrients. So for example, when you eat this American crap, there's no nutrients in it. So it goes in the body, it comes right out super fast. The body has no use for it. But nutrient dense food from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, again, is dense, meaning it's packed with nutrients. So your body takes its time to break it down and extract all the nutrients. And not only it has minerals and vitamins, but also fiber. Fiber slows down digestion. It sort of, uh, it regulates your digestion. So stuff don't, that, <clears throat> stuff don't digest super slow or super fast. But that's why it's important to eat nutrient dense foods. And another key point that I want to mention or another example, let's say you're looking for some money and we're going to discuss money like it's nutrients. So let's say you 
going through your closet and you got some money in your clothes and you know what clothes got money in it because you're going to hear the dollars crinkling you're going to hear your change jingling as you pull different clothes out of your closet anything that don't got no money in it you toss it to the side as soon as you pick it up pick it up toss it pick it up toss it no money here toss it that's how your body does with this processed American foods, the body recognizes that there is no nutrients in it. So as soon as the body determines what it is, it passes it along. And that's why you go to the bathroom maybe an hour later after you pig out on some Taco Bell or McDonald's because there's nothing in it for the body to hold on to it. But your nutrient-dense foods would be like you looking for money in your clothes, you pick up something, you're like, hey, I hear some quarters jingling. You pick up something else, you're like, hey, I hear some dollars crinkling. So you searching your pockets, turning the clothes inside out, making sure you got all the money out of those clothes that you're going through. So stuff that got no money in it, you toss it to the side. That's your body passing away this junk food. But once you find clothing that got money in it, you take your time, take out all the money. That's your body uh, extracting the nutrients out of the nutrient-dense foods. And this is important because there's going to be a famine in America. Real Talk 15, I believe, I just did a lesson on the famine. There's going to be no food. And that's mainly your common American foods. Grocery stores are going to go empty. But the Lord in the scripture has told us that he would feed us in the wilderness, that the earth will yield her fruit. And that's how the Lord is going to take care of us. He's not going to bless us with potato chips and a whole nut. The Lord is going to bless us with apples, bananas, broccoli. And anybody want to test it out? Go to Taco Bell. Then also get you a donut and some chips and some pop. Pig out. See if you don't doo-doo that mess out in an hour, hour and a half. See if you don't be hungry again an hour later. Then, on the other hand, on another day, eat you two apples, two bananas, a couple peaches, and see if that don't hold you all day. You know, go through your day this eating, you know, your raw fruits and vegetables. That's going to hold you all day and give you energy. So your body know what it's doing when you eat this stuff and then you poop it out, you know, an hour later. Your body is smarter than you. You can let that sink in. And another point that we want to make, nutrient-dense foods actually fill you up. And this is what I got in these diagrams over here. Like, let's start with the bottom one. This is 500 calories of oil, 500 calories of cheese, 500 calories of meat, 500 calories of potatoes, rice, and beans, 500 calories of fruits and veggies. You see the fruits and veggies completely fill your stomach on 500 calories. But processed foods, like we see up here at the top, which is saturated and fats and sugars and salt, you know, you can eat all that stuff, but it don't fill you up. That's why you can go to Taco Bell or to the Chinese buffet and eat like seven plates. You can spend $30 and get 30 things off the dollar menu and eat all of it because it's processed. Ain't nothing real about it. And how the best way we can explain it is if you eat some fruits, vegetables, some almonds, some walnuts, some pecans. When you chew that stuff up, it goes in your stomach as it was when you put it in your mouth. Meaning, once you chew it up, it's still the same broccoli. It's still the same almonds, the same pecans. It's just chewed up in your stomach now. But processed foods, that stuff starts digesting and breaking down while it's in your mouth. So... You know, that same burger, potato chips, or donut, it's already digesting by your saliva as you chew it. 
So by the time you get to your stomach already, you know, there's not that much going down there, just a bunch of slop. And another way to explain it, let's say you have a full plate of apples, broccoli, nuts and seeds, foods from the earth. You're going to eat that and get full because that same plate of food is now in your stomach. Nothing changed except that it's chewed up and it's soft. But you get that same plate of food and you put processed foods in it, you know, you're going to eat that stuff, you're still going to be hungry. It's going to be like you ain't ate nothing. It's because that stuff was already digesting and breaking down in your mouth as you was chewing it. So by the time it reached your stomach, ain't that much go down there. It's just a bunch of man-made chemicals and BS that already pre-digested in your mouth. Not to mention there's no fiber, you know, which is pretty much plant material. And let me see what else. It's kind of like, but that's just how it is. Pro uh, processed foods don't fill you up, but fruits and vegetables do. And, it's, and being full, it's also a mental thing. And that's why when we, you know, in the wilderness and we had this famine, the Lord not going to bless us with processed foods. You know, we might have been, we might go extended periods without eating. But the Lord give us a handful of bananas, apples, broccolis, and some nuts and seeds. When we eat that stuff, we'll be like, damn, we full. Because again, being full is a mental thing because your stomach stretches depending on how much food in it. So as your stomach stretches, it sends signals to the brain to let you know, like, hey, I'm getting full. And then, you know, you stop eating. But with processed foods, you can never really ever get full. And if you are full, it's not for long. And then also, just go a week straight eating American foods and fast foods and chips and whole nuts and suckers, you're probably going to die. Not to mention, that stuff's not going to give you no energy. That's why you poop it out one hour later. Because real foods should take hours to digest. So if you pooping something out an hour later, you're not getting no nutrients and no energy from it. But natural foods from the earth... That stuff takes, you know, hours. And all that time, your body is extracting minerals, vitamins, and nutrients from that food to fuel you and your body and regulate your body's processes. Pooping your food out an hour later will leave you hungry, weak, and dehydrated because you didn't really get no fuel for the body. Eating processed foods... It's like filling up your gas tank, but you got a hole in your tank. The moment you put it in there, it's already leaking out. But eating whole foods from the earth is you having a good gas tank. You eat it all, then it's all there. Take your time, you know, digesting it and getting all that energy from it. And another picture that I want to show, this is the stomach. This is your stomach when you haven't eaten, when you're in a fasted state. And as you eat, your stomach accommodates for the food that's coming into it. And the stomach is highly elastic, so it stretches. And then as your food begins to digest and food leaves the stomach and go into the intestines, your stomach returns back to normal. But the problem with processed foods, like we say, it digests rapidly because the body has no use for it. So you eat all that processed foods, your stomach gonna expand. But remember, your body has no use for that processed foods. So the body is gonna rapidly digest it and get rid of it real quick. So now your stomach is expanded 
And since that food digests quickly, it leaves the stomach quickly. The problem is the food left your stomach quickly, but your stomach is still expanded. So that's what, that's that feeling when you haven't eaten or you ate a bunch of junk. And then two hours later, you feel like you got a hole in your stomach or some of us will be fast. And this is how to know if you eat good or not. If you be, if, if we fasting, then all of a sudden, it feel like you got a hole in your stomach, you ain't eating right. That means everything left out your stomach rapidly, but your stomach is still expanded. So that's that feeling like you got a hole in your stomach. That's the problem with processed foods. And with whole natural foods from the earth, as we eat it, the stomach expands. But remember what we said? Nutrient-dense food digests more slowly. So as the nutrient-dense natural foods leave your stomach, as it's being digested, your stomach, the organ, can gradually shrink, returning back to its normal state. And then once you have finally, you know, digested all your natural foods and it left your stomach, your stomach can gradually return back to normal over a period of time. Instead of all your food leaving out at once, but your stomach is still expanded. And eating whole natural foods will prevent you from feeling like you got a hole in your stomach two hours later. Or we, or we fasting. Now you feel like you got a hole in your stomach. You can't take it. That's because we ain't eating right. I mean, I got to throw this out there because America done brainwashed our people. Dairy is not healthy. Dairy is not healthy. Meat is not healthy. And people say, well, I get organic meat. It's good for you. Ain't no meat good for you. Telling you that you can get some organic meat is like telling you you can get some organic cigarettes. A cigarette is a cigarette. Meat is meat. It's acidic to the body. It adds inflammation. And it leads to cancer and other diseases if you consume it excessively. You should treat meat like alcohol. You should eat it moderately. So, yep, this is why it's important to eat natural foods because the Lord is not going to give us a bunch of BS. So the Lord give us all this BS. We on the run, supposed to be surviving. We not about to eat for 20 hours until the Lord blesses us again. Then the Lord give us some BS and then we hungry 45 minutes later. Now the whole group, we supposed to be running from mechanical dogs, but now everybody got to take a poop. Everybody got to use it. No, that's why the Lord is going to bless us in the wilderness with these nutrient-dense foods. So the Lord might feed us one time a day. And it might be enough to know we get kind of full, but that's going to last us the whole day. And guess what? As our food digests, our stomach is going to be expanded, but it'll slowly shrink as the food leaves the stomach. And then our stomach is going to shrink normally to its fastest state. It's not going to be expanded. Everything leaves rapidly. Now we got an expanded, stretched out stomach with no food in it. So that's why it's important to understand how foods work with digestion. And we got to understand how the Lord is going to bless us. He said, you should go hungry, but my servant shall eat. Well, we got to know what the Lord is going to feed us. Because you can't be in the wilderness looking for a food truck. Or, you know, looking for an easy bake oven. The food going to be right there in our face. And you got to be able to know what food the Lord is going to give us so you can recognize it when you see it. You can't walk past an apple tree and be like, Lord, please feed me, me and the group hungry. Please bless us with something. The blessing is right there. It comes from the earth. And this is also important for fasting because, for example, what you eat can determine how your fast is. If you eat 
a bunch of fats, processed foods, protein, cheese, oil, and dairy, and you go to fast, that's going to make your fast harder. But if you're eating a bunch of fruits, vegetables, you know, nuts, beans, and stuff, natural foods, it'll make your fast easier. Because the processed foods is going to stretch out your stomach, and then it's going to rapidly leave the stomach. Now you got a stretched out stomach with nothing in, with nothing in it. So that's going to make your fast hard. On the other hand, you got meat and oil. Now meat takes a long time to digest. So you eat a bunch of meat and we supposed to be on the run or supposed to be fasting. Your stomach is stretched out with all that meat. But then eventually your stomach is going to get rid of that meat all at once. So now there goes that feeling again, like you got a hole in your stomach. You done ate all that meat and cause the body got rid of it at once, you still got a stretched out stomach. And digestion takes energy cause your stomach, your intestines is a muscle. Now what your stomach and intestines is doing is taking the food and smushing it up. That's the equivalent of you, you know, once you chew the food, you're trying to smash it with your hands. So you're using the muscles. So that food is going through your system and you're not getting no energy from it, but your, but your stomach and stuff still working. So now you're, you're making your digestive system work harder and burn more energy because you're eating all this processed foods that's going in and out of you in like two hours. And then meat is just a tough thing to digest. So it's also making your digestive system work harder, making you use more energy. So this is how what we eat before a fast can determine how our fast is. Because if we eating just fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, and grains, and beans, you know, the stuff will slowly leave our digestive system. The stomach will slowly shrink and return to its fastest state, making your, your fast easier. And the last thing that I want to get into, I got a little bit of information about gut health. Because in our digestive system, we have bacteria that helps us break down our food. You got good bacteria, you got bad bacteria. If you eat natural foods from the earth, it's gonna fuel the good bacteria. If you eat this American BS stuff, it's gonna fuel the bad bacteria. And what you, and that's what I got to saying, you are what you eat. Because if you eat a bunch of this American processed stuff, that's the kind of bacteria that fills your gut. That's why people who eat like shit, that's why they can eat a bunch of Taco Bell and eat a bunch of candy and potato chips, but they don't get sick. Their stomach is made for it because their stomach is full of the bad bacteria. While us, that's in this truth, we should be eating better, eating more natural. When we try to eat unhealthy, we get sick because we got the good bacteria from the natural foods. Now, when we put this bad stuff in our digestive system, it causes an imbalance. That's like, never mind, but that's what goes on. But on the other hand, if you got somebody that eat like crap and then they try to eat healthy, they get sick. They get the runs, they get gassy. You know, they pooping out a bunch of fiber because they wasn't able to properly break down the greens, the cabbage, the apple. So they pooping out most of the fruits and vegetables they ate. That's because the bad bacteria in their gut can't digest those high fiber natural foods. Just like our good gut bacteria can't handle all the toxins and poisons and chemicals that's in these processed foods. And bacteria is not necessarily a bad thing. Bacteria is just a class of organisms. 
Like here we have humans, animals, plants, fungi, which is fungus. There's also bacteria and viruses. It's just another class of organisms. Now let's read some of this. You have many bacteria in your body. In fact, you have more of them than you have cells. Most are good for you. The ones found in your gut not only help you digest foods, they work all over your body. It can be good for your physical and mental health. This, the gut micro, microbiome. This is some base for the bacteria in your digestive tract. Here, they help you break down food and turn nutrients into things the body can use. So, we eat the food, we do the hard part. We chew it up, then the stomach break it down into smaller components, and then the bacteria in our digestive tract also eats the food. And when the bacteria eats the food that we eat, it breaks those food particles into even smaller components so that the vitamins and minerals and everything can be transported to our to our bloodstream, to our blood vessels. So again, we eat the food, we break the bulk of it down, but then the bacteria also eats the food too to break it down even smaller to help our body extract all the nutrients. And the good microbiome, the good bacteria do more help than just digestion. Because again, the good bacteria helps in digestion. They also keep the bad bacteria in check. So yeah, we that's why uh, they got probiotics. You know, it's supposed to fuel the good bacteria in your gut and kick out the bad bacteria. Because if you just eat BS from the so-called white man, it's gonna make that bad bacteria. Then what comes with that? Inflammation, diarrhea, upset stomach, Crohn's disease, um, what's the other one? Ulcerative colitis, you get stomach ulcers, and sometimes your stomach lining, which is a mucus lining, you know, can, uh, can burn away. So that's why it's important to fuel our gut um, with natural foods to feed the good bacteria. Because another thing too, like we mentioned, if you get somebody that eat like crap and they try to eat healthy, their body can't handle it. They don't have the right bacteria for it. That's why they have the runs. They got diarrhea. That's why they pooping out all the green leafy vegetables they just ate. This is important because again, when we're on a run, you know, from Esau, the Lord is going to be feeding us these healthy, these healthy foods from the earth. And if we eat in natural as in less processed foods as possible, like we should be doing, we're going to already be ready to eat from the earth. But if you got somebody that's BSing, still eating this American crap, when it's time to eat fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds 24-7, they're going to have a hard time adjusting because what? They got that bad bacteria in their gut. And then that bad bacteria can't properly break down all this stuff. So that's going to leave them dehydrated, uh, feeling weak at times because they wasn't able to properly extract all the nutrients, you know, for energy to fuel them. And it's just going to mess up all the other body's functions until their body get adjusted to eating natural and healthy foods. So that's why it's important to understand nutrient-dense foods packed with nutrients versus the white man's processed foods made in the food lab. And how it applies to digestion. Because one of the hardest struggles the elect is going to have in this time of uh, Jacob's trouble is the famine. The famine, being hungry, is what's going to break most people into getting an RFID chip. 
And just to touch up on the one last point, I don't know if I explained it clearly, but um, when you eat processed foods, it turns to slop. The candy bar, the donut, the Coca-Cola, the candy, when you chew on it long enough, it turns to a slop. Slop is a liquid. So when you eat that stuff in your mouth, it turns to slop. When it reaches your stomach, it turns to slop, which is why your stomach can digest is which is why your stomach can digest it so rapidly. But fruits and vegetables don't turn to slop. You chew it up and it's that same broccoli and that same apple and that same salad and them same walnuts. It's just chewed up. You know, it's not broken down on a chemical level, but on a physical level, it's just crunched up. But nothing's changed. Them processed foods, again, digest in your mouth. So in your mouth, before you swallow it, it's already breaking down, turning into slop. It's a bunch of liquid and chemicals. So by the time it reaches your stomach, it's not that much going into your stomach. It's already partially digested and no use for you. So that's why it's important, you know, to realize that point is, you know, another reason you can eat junk food all day and not get full. But we got a few scriptures we're going to get into before we close out. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that do a lindo, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And the heavens will be the elect, the inhabitants of the earth will be everybody that's not part of this elect. And of the sea. For the devil, the so-called white man, is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have a short time. Short time to what? Or short time to be in power. A short time to get his new world order established. So he's going to come with great wrath. And then go that word great. Great wrath for the great tribulation. So this time of trouble is going to be pushed by the so-called white man. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman. The dragon being cast to the earth is the white man falling out of power. And that woman is not actually a woman. It represents the entire nation of Israel. Every Negro, Hispanic, and Native American, more specifically those that are of the elect. And that woman which brought forth the man child, again, what nation did the man child Yahweh Shai? Who is he born from? He's born from the nation of Israel. So the woman is that nation of Israel where the Lord sprang from. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. I just broke this down recently. This don't mean she's going to be given wings. It means the elect of the nation of Israel will be given the ability to take flight, meaning to escape. And that proves it in the next part. And to the woman, we're given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. So we're going to take flight or escape into the wilderness, into her place. Because that's what the Lord has prepared for us is in the wilderness. He did it before when he took us out of Egypt. He had a place for us in the wilderness where he took care of us for 40 years. The Lord did it again. The Lord did it before. He's going to do it again. Our place is not going to be at home at our current address in the cities. It's going to be dove zones. So, yep, our place is in the wilderness where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent, which is the so-called white man. And let's read this again. And to the woman, we're given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished. What are we going to be nourished with? The foods from the earth. This is what's going to sustain us and keep us energized and healthy, being able to move through the spirit and be awake and not be pooping everywhere, having holes in our stomach, can't move, not being dehydrated. So the Lord is going to nourish us in the wilderness. He ain't going to nourish us in the cities. All food and water supplies are going to be completely cut off from the cities. It's going to be nothing but the sword 
plagues and, and famine. Plagues being different illnesses. So there's not going to be any food or water in the cities unless you get the RFID chip. So that's why the Lord has our place in the wilderness to be nourished. Next scripture, Ezekiel 34, 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. Talking about the elect. And will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. So the Lord's going to make a covenant of peace on our behalf with the beasts, the animals of the earth. So they're not going to bother us. Bears and lions going to walk straight past us. They might even let us pet them. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness. See that? And sleep in the woods. So yeah, the elect, when we take flight, escape into the wilderness, we're going to dwell safely there and sleep in the woods. That's where we're going to sleep at. That's where we're going to eat at. That's where we're going to be at. Our address is going to be in the woods because the earth is our home. So when we in the wilderness and in the woods, guess what? We still at home. And I will make them and thy places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There should be showers of blessings. One of those blessings is being the Lord blessing us with food, nourishing us in the wilderness. Verse 27, And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. So yeah, right now the land is still barren, but once we take flight to the wilderness, you we're gonna see food popping up unlike we ever have before. Because one of the curses of Cain, the earth don't really produce food for the white man. Because this little stuff we see in the stores, that ain't nothing. The earth can produce some stuff when it's taken care of correctly. But the Lord is gonna make it yield fruit for us. And they shall sure dwell safe in their land. That's the wilderness. That's our that's what we said, the earth is our home. It says their land that's possessive. Our land is the entire earth. So wherever we at, we gonna dwell safely and be comfortable and be nourished. And shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke. When he, when a dollar crash, that's the bands of our yoke. That's the one thing that's tying us to America and tying us to the white man because we need the work to make that stupid paper dollar so we can eat. Well, the Lord is going to break us from this slavery by having us go to the wilderness. But the first Lord is going to crash the dollar. Then once that dollar crashes, that's us being free of slavery. The next slavery would be the microchip. But we're not going to have to work to eat no more. The Lord got us in the wilderness. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out the hands of those that served themselves of them. As scripture, Job 2 and 22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. That's the elect. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. And the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. So yeah, back to the curses of Cain. The earth doesn't yield her strength to Esau but it's going to yield her strength to us. So yeah, the Lord is going to feed us the foods from the earth and that's how the Lord is going to take care of us. And a thing we can do again to start prepping for the famine, to start prepping for our escape, our flight into the wilderness is start eating these natural whole foods now. Put away all that meat, all that cheese and dairy and processed stuff it's just going to make it harder for you when there's none of that stuff left. You're going to have a rough transition. You're going to have the runs for a few weeks, upset stomachs, cramping, bloatedness. But, you know, you, you transition to that stuff now, you have a much smoother time in the time to come when it's time to flee to the wilderness. So I hope that was helpful. Somebody let me know in the comments. Till next time, Shalom.